Hi, it looks like we're, we're live. We are live. Hey, Warren. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Papa. Hello. Cellular Healing TV. Sorry about the delay. We, we do run in. This is a new technology um, that we're going to be doing at uh, Cellular Healing TV from now and till forever. We want to um, open up this call. We have conversation, live, live conversation um, through this, this site right now um, where you can ask questions and build content that you'd want to hear in the future. So we're really excited to launch it. We just branded it CellularHealing.TV with Dr. Dan Pompa and my co-host, Dr. David Asa Dr. David I guess I hang with you guys so much, and uh, some of the docs call me doc. You know, I go to all the, the advanced practitioner training, you know, that it, it's all the rage that everyone is, like, is clamoring to learn. Um, so thank you. I'll, I'll take the honorary doc. How's that? All right, on, an honorarium. So because this is just our, our new show, we be, we did a couple um, test runs the last couple of weeks at 10 a.m. on every Friday, and this one is it's cellular healing TV. That's our core. That's our mission. That's the the message God's given us to the world that if you heal a cell, that you do get well. And it's not your genetics. It's not you know, um, that you need more medications, that your body's lacking in medications, but you need to heal the cell to get well. You need to remove the cause. So, Dr. Pompa, before we even get into some of the, the great topics, there's a lot of folks out there just want, what is cellular healing? That cellularhealing.tv, what is cellular healing? Can you define that for us? Cellular well, first, healing. First of all, it, it's all the rage right now, right? It is. Everyone yes. wants to know, what is this rage called cellular healing? And yes. we've been getting lots of messages just from the first two shows that we had. So let's talk about why is this such the rate? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's something that uh, is really gone crazy, you know, obviously. I, I believe because of the results uh, that we're getting. Um, you know, there's so many people out there suffering right now. More and more hormone conditions. There just was conditions. Diabetes. Was that my phone? Oh, uh, that was me testing it. Anyways, uh, yeah, and you know, there's there's so many people with more and more conditions that are not being helped. And, well, look, you know, I, I believe that, you know, you asked what cellular healing is, and it, it really is why people are getting sick. It really boils down to what's happening at the cell. And I, I think that, you know, unless you've been living on some remote island somewhere, I mean, everybody's heard that inflammation is the cause of all these conditions, you know, whether it's diabetes, thyroid, you know, even cancer, even why people can't lose weight today, hormone dysregulation, you know, inflammation. But when we think of inflammation, we think of a sore shoulder or a, you know, a twisted ankle or something, and that is inflammation. However, the inflammation that really they're talking about is cellular inflammation and how it disrupts the function of the cell. Look, you know, every one of us have 50, 70 trillion cells in our body. Um, it really directs everything that we do, how you feel, how you think, how you digest food. Uh, every organ system has different types of cell. Well, when we start to not feel well, this really means that our cells are not working well. So that's why the mantra of fix the cell, get well, it really is honing in on the real problem. So yeah, inflammation of the cell is the problem, but I know most listening that doesn't mean anything to. You know, but all I can tell you is, is that without teaching you cellular biology, is that your cell is really, it dictates how long you will live, it dictates how healthy you live, it dictates really every aspect of your life. If you're not feeling well right now, you've got a cellular issue. So there's just been so many huge breakthroughs in science right now, you know, that we know what's going on at the cell. So really this you know, new science is something that we're teaching. And this is why I know we're ahead of the curve on this as far as, you know, what we're doing with so many people who don't feel well. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit further about this because I've had the honor to be in the audience while you're teaching uh, practitioners, you know, medical doctors, dentists, naturopaths, health mm -hmm. coaches. They are literally coming from all over the country and now we have people internationally that are reaching out to learn these protocols that you're teaching. Why is this? Why is this the case? Yeah, I, I honestly, David, I, I mean, cellular healing is the rage right now because it works, right? You know, um, I, I see people from all over the world. Uh, you know, I have probably two today. 
uh, one from Australia, somewhere else, you know, um, uh, oh gosh, somewhere in Europe. But, you know, the, the point is, is that, you know, this is something that people are understanding more. Uh, you know, and again, if you don't understand the concept of cellular healing, haven't heard of it, you know, you will, um, because it does work. And honestly, David, that's why people are gravitating to it. I, I think like practitioners are understanding now that this is what they need to get people well today. They need an understanding of epigenetics and how your genes can be turned on for bad. And now all of a sudden you have a thyroid condition or an autoimmune condition where your own immune system's attacking itself. You know, and you say, what happened? You know, well, why wasn't this happening? You know, what, w at least when I was growing up, you know, we didn't even see a lot of these conditions. Um, you know, type 2 diabetes, we call it adult onset. Can't call it that anymore because kids are getting it. So what's going on? Well, we know that, you know, certain genes are getting triggered because we have this influx of these new toxins, uh, you know, that we were never exposed to before. They have the ability to enter into our cell and literally change the way your genes are expressing themselves. You know, if you don't apply this, you know, to whatever you're doing, trying to get well yourself, or if you're a practitioner listening, trying to get people well without understanding that concept of being able to turn those genes on and off. You know, the great news is we can change them for good. You know, it's all over the literature. Uh, you know, we talk a lot, David, and, you know, we probably might have time or we're going to get into this next time about how we're utilizing intermittent fasting even to change DNA and to change gene function and to, you know, really, you know, downregulate this cellular inflammation. You know, but it, it's that understanding that people are reaching out for, David. Patients are and practitioners are. You know, it's funny that you bring this up. I, I'm actually, you can tell I'm not in my normal background. I'm, I'm in New Jersey right now. I'm, I, I'm I speaking this weekend. And, and, I think we're going to do it's, I'm doing show. the cooking show next, right? Um, but I, I, I was out last night uh, to, to dinner with, uh, with, with my dad and uh, um, my, my stepmom, and they were, we were just, actually talking about this. 23 years ago, I was diagnosed with a, an autoimmune condition, and they remember, they thought that it was lupus that I was diagnosed with, but the doctor said it could become lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, and I had a lot, I was 22 years old, and I had all these challenges, and today, we were talking about it, they were like, well, you know, you're, you're, I'm, I would say I'm, I'm healthier today than I was 23 years ago, and you brought up intermittent fasting, so Warren, I War, Warren, you, I know you wanted to get into some other. Yeah, some I'm other, here. Warren, are you there? Um, I know you had some other topics, but you know we talk about changing gene expression. We talk about healing the cell. You know, Warren, you've had a personal experience with this as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cellular healing was truly what you know gave me my life back, and that's what put us on the mission. And it's. It's neat um, how things develop over time. You know, Dr. Pompa and I, and I said this in our last uh, Google Plus interview, that Dr. Pompa couldn't get on because of technology. We're having some <laughs> challenges back there. But I, I did share my story. So you can go back and um, go to our YouTube channel. Just type in um, Dr. Dan Pompa, and you'll pull up his YouTube channel. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and then go to the, our you know previous videos. And so those videos are auto-posted every week. So these live hangouts, they'll be posted on Cellular Healing dot TV for a week and then once we do our new hangout um, the only place you can find the video is on YouTube so after this call it'll be recorded live and you can go back and rewatch you know some of the things that we share but yeah that's why we're gonna do this we're gonna do it consistently because it's a message that transformed my life and I got to see it clinically when I work with Dr. Pomp in the clinic I used to even actually see some of his clients as I sat down with him and worked with him um, helping patients get well that confidence really came in me so Dr. Pomp was like you need to go do it. You need to transform lives. So I start seeing clients um, by myself for a while, and then eventually I understood that my gifting is really in the marketing and advertising and the technology to bring this message to the world. And that's why we have a group of doctors now across the country doing cellular healing. And that's why it is the rage. And because of the results that we're getting, I mean, it transformed my life. I literally, you know, couldn't even think. I my memory was gone. Weight gain, insomnia. I mean, you name it, I had it. I don't want to get into the details. Watch the video, but it transformed our lives. And Dr. Pompa, there, there is a really a roadmap to cellular healing that um, God has given you over the years. We've been working together the last eight years developing these protocols relentlessly, not because we wanted to, but because we had to, to get their, our own lives back. And then when, when something like that, that touches you so deeply and you know that it's 
it's just not for you, that you've been given this information for a reason and a purpose. Um, you pray about things, and it just gets downloaded. Like if someone, you know, it's, you see it all the time, Lance Armstrong, he suffered with cancer, and now he wants to go out there and um, talk about the rec recovery of it. How much more um, what we would do with cellular healing that comes from the inside out instead of the outside in, not the allopathic way, but... God's way, you know, from the inside out, that healing principles, and it really God is, the, the protocol guy, the, the one that God speak to the, as far as the protocol side, that's Dr. Pompa, you know, and, and I walked hand by hand, hand in hand with him um, through this journey, um, you know, four years after he, or four or five years after he even started, and traveled and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars getting this information, and Dan, why don't you walk them through, Dr. Dan, um, some of those strategies, starting with our number one and cellular healing. Yeah, I mean, the five R's really came about, I, I think this is what you're asking, just, you know, it, it came about because it was very difficult uh, to describe what cellular healing is. I, I, you know, we probably had that difficulty already. You know, what, what do you mean, cellular healing? You know, it's <laughs> when we talk, as soon as you bring up the, the word cell, people tune you out because it's uh, biology. Um, you know, but when we realize that, you know, this has become a rage and it's become bigger than we are in our message as well, you know, we better think of better ways, you know, to communicate it. I struggle getting doctors to realize the concepts that need to be done to get these patients that they're not able to get well, well. Um, and I always say, hey, I'm not smart enough to come up with the five R's. It was too simple. <laughs> it was such a clean <laughs> It's a roadmap now for, it really started as a roadmap for practitioners to know what to do to fix a cell to get patients well. And now it's been something the public grabbed onto. So, you know, again, it's, you know, you know it's simple enough that the average person goes, hey, I get that. You know, and people started understanding it. Our number one is simple. You have to remove the source. I, I, however, simple, but yet this is where most people go wrong. Patients and practitioners are light. They don't go upstream far enough to remove what caused the cell to dysfunction in the per first place or cause whatever symptoms they don't like in the first place. Uh, alternative docs simply are giving more and more herbs and supplements or vitamins and then you have the allopathic doctors giving more medications and really nobody's asking what's going on upstream. You know, are you living in a moldy home? Did you get bit by a tick? You know, do you have these types of infections? Do you have heavy metals that we talked about, you know, last time? Uh, you know, detoxing heavy metals is, you know, done wrong all the time. The bottom line is so few people are actually looking upstream. But if you remove the interference, the body does have an innate ability to heal itself. It's not a novel concept. So our number one is, in fact, removing that source. Then you can change gene expression. Then you can downregulate inflammation. But if those sources remain, I don't care how many vitamins you take, I don't care how many medications you take, you're not going to get well permanently. It's that, it's, it's that street sweeper concept you were talking about. What most people do is they take all these vitamins and they take these herbs and they try to go through a cleanse and they just start moving things throughout their body. They're stirring it up and then and they, they feel sicker, not getting better, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great analogy. I Go back and watch that, that first Google Hangout. I think it was two ago and we talked about detox and – you know, right, David. I, and it's so funny because, you know, right after that call, I was going down the highway and there was one of those street cleaners, honestly. <laughs> if I was on a major highway, it was like on this major road. Anyways, I, dust was flying everywhere and it was hilarious because there it was. It was just moving. It, it was the visual representation of it. Yeah. So, so for people who haven't been here before and it's their first time, we want to welcome you. And yet, let's share with them, what is cellular detox? What is true cellular detox? What is that? that means to someone who's viewing right now? Well, I mean, when we look at the five R's, and that's kind of like, again, that roadmap of these things that need to be fixed in the cell. Cellular detox is you can't, look, everyone's heard of liver cleanses, colon cleanses, and magnet cleanses. I mean, there's a zillion of them out there, right? And, and they become the rage, these things, right? Well, this has become the rage. This is the real deal, though. This is a lot different. Um, you know, uh, when you look at those types of cleanses, they're really not getting to the cell. Uh, you know, and you have to, if you're not fixing these cellular functions, you're never, ever, ever, you know, going to really get well and stay well. So when we talk about cellular detox, we're talking about getting certain cellular functions well. For example, the cell membrane. When that cell membrane is still inflamed, you can do all the liver or colon cleanses you want. 
Bottom line is now you can't get good things into the cell and you can't get the bad stuff out. So these toxins are literally accumulating in the cell from even the cell itself. You know, it's like if you burn a fire in your house, uh, you know, the smoke, if the damper's not open, the smoke just keeps filling the house, everyone in it dies. Well, that's what's happening in your cell. The membrane, the dampers are shut down. So the toxins that even the cell's creating like a fire are not getting out. So guess what? Now you're start, you start changing your gene expression. So when we talk about cellular detox, we're just talking about, you know, 50 to 70 trillion cells, you know, working, so they're removing toxins, gene expression changes, cellular energy goes up, you know, th there's a pathways in the cell that are meant to remove toxins constantly and downregulate inflammation. But if you don't fix that, what good is the liver cleanse? So, you know, you have to fix the cell membrane. Yeah, and by the way, R number two, regenerating the cell membrane. There, I, I just explained why that has to occur. Mm -hmm. um, and what we know now in science and new stuff is the cell membrane is what changes your gene expression. You see how it, 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 all these R's are really um, interlinked. And then R number three is raising cellular energy or, or you know, really, um, you know, bringing back cellular energy. If you don't do that, you can't do the most basic things of the cell. You can't think clear. You can't digest. You know, cellular energy. ATP, it's huge. It's some of the times the first thing we have to do with a very challenged patient. So, you know, R number two, regenerating the cell membrane. R number three, restoring cellular energy. And R four, of course, reducing cellular inflammation. We talked a lot about that. And R five is uh, reestablishing methylation, which plays a role in getting rid of toxic and bad hormones, which plays a role in making serotonin. So, yes, it plays a role in how you feel, depression plays a role in how your cell detoxes. You know, that is an epidemic. It plays a role of how you adapt to stress. So when you're stressed out emotionally, you're affecting your detox pathways. You're affecting how your hormones um, work because you can't get rid of toxic hormones. It leads to cancer and more DNA problems. These five R's have to be reestablished, fixed, cellular repair has to occur to get well today. This is where the epidemic is. This is why people don't feel well. Dr. Pompa, I, and I know next week we'll get into some specific, specific topics of cellular healing and how that applies to different conditions such as diabetes, thyroid conditions, autoimmune is a huge one, um, also heart disease, food allergies, a lot of these specific things and struggles that people are having. We weren't, we're going to give solutions and a neat thing we're going to do on these calls too is bring in live testimonies of other people walking through this because this, this technology allows us to reach out to some of your clients across the country and other doctors we're going to invite on these calls. So there's going to be some really great information. So, you know, even before I, I'm going to, we're going to wrap this up in the next few minutes. I want everybody to know, even though the, the site's down that it goes to, but if you click the below this video, um, as you're watching this or coming back and watching this video on a replay, click the gain access, the green button down below this video. That'll put you on an email list that reminds you every Friday about this call and it'll give you a link to the website so you can either watch it live or go back and watch the replay um, after it's recorded. It's up almost immediately. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there. And, and Dr. Pompa, you know, one of the concepts I want to kind of close with is, you know, let's focus a little bit more on R number one. And, you know, it's one of those things that a point I think we should really drive home is that if your cell get sick and dies. Let, let's, let's think about that. A lot of people have these different theories, Dr. Pompa, and let's, let's break one of these myths. It's like, well, you know, calories in, calories out. You know, if I eat whatever I want, my cells were like little engines, they'll burn up whatever like a furnace and I'll be fine because I can eat what I want as long as I run my engine hot, the hotter it is, it, you know, it's the furnace concept. I can burn anything and I'll be healthy. You know, and where one way that you've well, from my environmental background, it's like, okay, let's think of the environmentalists out there that, that really understand this in, in an environmental way. Can we have a, um, an industry? Can we have a nuclear power plant, you know, kind of like the Homer Simpson an analogy? Can we have them dumping toxic waste into a, a pond, you know, think of a cell as a pond, and it not affect the fish? It did not affect the genetics of the fish. It's not going to affect the sediments. It's not going to affect the ecosystem of that pond which represents a cell. So how can we think, how can we think for a second that what we put in our mouth, what we breathe, what we take even through our eyes, through fumes or you know the, the amalgam fillings in our mouth, how can we believe that those ponds are just going to be able to process that toxin 
those those foods, those preservatives, and it's going to be fine. Dr. Pompa, kind of debunk that. I really want to just send them home with that before we move into our next topic next week. Yeah, I, I think there's multiple questions in there, so I'm not sure which way to come at it. But um, you know, first of all, when you the more fuel you burn, you know, so the calorie in thing, the right. you know, be able to eat whatever I want, taking whatever I'm just going to burn it. Well, remember, the more the more you're burning, the more toxins you're actually even making. So if your cell is not working, if your cell membranes, um, you know, inflamed, you're going to be actually creating more energy, which creates more pollution that you're not able to get out of the cell. So remember, every little mitochondria in your cell that creates energy, they're little mini factories. So, you know, I mean, great, you can fire up those and have all this great energy coming out, but remember, if you're, you know, you're creating more pollution in the cell, and if the cell membrane's inflamed because toxins are the number one reason why it inflames, so if you're taking in these toxins, they're driving cell membrane inflammation, and therefore, your cells are becoming more polluted. So the same eating, eating your eating candy bar and going and running it off isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said there was kind of multiple questions there, because that's one thing you know, that people, that's one myth that people think that is going to happen, you know what I'm saying? But the problem with that is, is that, you know, you eat candy bars, you eat candy bars, your body can only take in so much stored sugar. It can only store so many things. You only have so many closets to put your clothes in. And then once you keep buying more clothes, now you have to put them somewhere else. And that's called fat, right? So now all of a sudden you're storing everything. Sugar becomes stored as fat very easily. You know, and it's very easy to fill up your glycogen, which is stored sugar. So now you're storing everything as fat. And now if you hormonally don't have the ability to burn the fat, guess what? Now your body's need, it gives you cravings because all it wants is sugar because that's the only thing it can burn. It takes a certain hormone like leptin for your body to be able to hear to burn that fat. And, and you know, 80% of the population doesn't have that ability to do that efficiently anymore. So you're, every time you eat the candy bar, you're storing fat. You might burn some of it, but eventually the next candy bar, the next product, the candy bar, it's the next piece of bread, and then the next grain, then the next bowl of oatmeal, you know, or the next healthy whole grain bread that you eat. Everything's being turned to sugar and stored as fat. Now you don't have the ability to access it. You know, it was kind of like me with this call. You know, it's like I didn't have the I didn't have the accessibility, so I was I was unable to get on. Well, that's your fat stores. That's most people. You don't have the access code. And you're making more of it, so you're getting fatter. And you're wondering why you can't get thinner despite what you eat because you don't have access to your fat. You don't have the ability to burn it. So really, that, that, is, that is a myth. And toxins have a lot to do with that because it's driving cellular inflammation, blunting the receptor to these hormones that you need to communicate with to be a fat burner. We opened up Pandora's box there because I, I know that you know, people are semi-confused you know, confused on that, what I just said. But weight loss resistance, that's a whole show, guys. That, that's actually a great topic for next week, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go there. But to sum it up, Dr. Pompa, you, you know, you're talking about R number one and removing the source. So the, the source could be that causes the cell to inflame and become toxic. It could actually be the foods that you're bringing in because you can't, and they all work together. You know, and if the toxins have caused inflammation on a cell mem membrane, even when you're bringing in your foods and you're processing the sugars, it's going to make it even more toxic because there's an inflamed cell membrane. So those are some of the big sources, toxins you know, what you eat, your diet, and then obviously, um, what's an, another thing, you know, what's an, a third, you know, three takeaways that cause, you know, major sources of inflammation and really make well, that cell well, worse. To toxins today are number one, but, you know, number diet one. plays a role in two of the main ones, you know, a lot of these, you know, bad fats people are eating, and, and again, I, that's another show, because it's another show. saturated fats and cholesterol are the bad guys, I'm going to tell you right now, it's the two fats that we need to fix the cell. So I know I just shocked some of you out there already. Really, but it's the vegetable oils. The, the fats that our government is promoting, polyunsaturated fatty acids extracted from sources like vegetables. Um, vegetable oil, I have no problem with vegetable oil as long as it's in a vegetable. But as soon as it's brought out, in, you know, it's in our potato chips and pretzels and breads and everything we're eating and our families are eating, it's a denatured oil that makes its way right to the cell. Fat attracts fat drives inflammation. And of course, the big one is every time you raise glucose and insulin, you're driving inflammation throughout your body. That's why diabetics die early. That's why they have degenerative diseases. But listen, the average American, you know, 99% of people in this country, yes, even the skinny folk walking around, 
they have elevated glucose and insulin. If you want to age faster than anyone you know at the cellular level, the outside, the inside, you raise up your glucose and insulin. You know, look, you know, I'm, you know, almost 50 now. And, you know, I feel better now. I look younger now than I did even some years ago. You know, really because why? You know, you control glucose and insulin. And Warren, you know, we've been practicing that. David, you've been practicing that as of lately, and you've lost a lot of weight because of it. But you age much slower. And again, anti-aging, all the crap that's out there, we need to do a show on it because there's some major things people can be doing to age slower, not just here, but inside your body at every cell. That's what's key. And we'll talk about telomeres and really the only biological clock we know of. You know, what the shorter it gets, the faster you get, you know, to age and the closer you get to death. And so many people that's happening prematurely. We can do a test and look at how short these telomeres are. And you can be 50 years old and look like at the cellular level be an 80 year old because of the length of these telomeres. So you're close to death and you don't even know it. So we're, I want to bring some of those concepts out to our Love listeners. It. I'm, I'm writing notes, by the way, for future shows as you keep yeah. bringing up topics. Great. Well, well, I know we need to we need to wrap this up, um, David. I know that we need to to keep these calls at thirty minutes. That's our that's the the co-hosting um, schedule here, and we're getting to get better and better at these. And I, I think the theme is from this last you know even ten minutes is that we need to keep doing these shows. There's a lot of topics and things that we want to share with the world. So you need to come back at ten a.m. You need to share this if you're watching this link right now and you just watch the replay. Share cellularhealing.tv or just click above and copy and paste the URL that you see there. Copy and paste it and repaste it on your Facebook account and share it with people. Email it out. Say, hey, if, if you want to make a difference, you want to be a health advocate, you want to spread truth and real results and real solutions for this epidemic that's going across America, people are dying out there. And, you know, I, we want it to be controversial. Think about it. Does the government care about your health? Do they truly care about your health? or who should take control of your own health. It's you. You know, it's a system. It's a business. The pharmaceutical companies aren't sitting around, I just want to transform lives today. I want to help people today. I want to make a difference today. Oh, what the reality is? Oh, we just had a $1 billion lawsuit. It doesn't matter. That made us $12, $12 billion. We have $11 billion um, profit this year, even though we had to pay off a billion in lawsuits because we killed people. And we actually told them about it on the TV show, but they did it anyway because they, you emotionally bought into to hope that's false. We want to give real results, real hope, and real answers. And Dr. Pompa has a lot of those answers, some other experts we're going to bring on. And we have the best co-host on the planet with David Asarno. He's incredible. He's world-renowned you know, for doing things like this. And he's the one that's actually the brainchild of putting this all together and helping Dr. Pompa and I on this mission to get it out there. We love you guys. We so, we're so thankful you spent time to watch this today. David, Dr. Pompa, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye. Thanks, guys. Yep, great, thank you. great show.